following is a Learfield presentation of the Washington State Sports Network. He buries it. The Cougs have taken the lead. Oh, this place is going to pop off. This is the Cougar Basketball Hour on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Tonight's show is brought to you by U.S. Bank. Life keeps moving. We're here for every step. U.S. Bank. Member FDIC. Tonight's show is also brought to you by Zeppos, where the Palouse comes to play and eat. Now with Coach Cammie Etheridge, here's your host, Steve Grubbs. Well, thank you very much and a very pleasant good evening to you all, wherever you may be, as we welcome you to Zeppos in Pullman, Washington. It is the Cougar Basketball Hour as we get ready to talk with the head coach of Washington State University Basketball, Cammie Etheridge, as we get together here on this Monday, as again, the Cougars in action this past weekend. The four-game homestand will continue this weekend. We urge you to make your plans to join us Friday night at 7 o'clock when California comes to visit, and then Sunday at 1 when Stanford comes to town. And again, with us again, the head coach of Washington State University Basketball, Cammie Etheridge. Cammie, first of all, good evening to you. How are you on this Monday night? I'm, I'm better when I walk in this place and get to talk to just uh, loyal fans who, who just reminded me that after losses, this is the time they need to be here more than any time. And I appreciate that more than anything. You know, that means the world to us. And just having people that are here and, and support us through thick and thin, and, and it really means a lot to us. I know you talked to me after the game uh, against Utah, and it was, it was a nice crowd against Utah yeah. on Sunday, wasn't great it? Great crowd. Great crowd. Both the weekend was great. And, again, I think we were building something really special and, and still have a chance. We just have to be more perfect. You know, when, when you lose someone like Charlize, obviously that just – your margin for error just increases. But, um, again, w we played – obviously you, you beat a, uh, a number two team on their home court half the game without Charlize. You come back and, and almost, you know, you're ahead most of the game against a number yeah. six team in the country. And we match up so well with Colorado. You know, that one sticks with us a little bit that we just, you know, just didn't get quite enough scoring punch in that. Uh, Utah's really good and hung with them. Again, I just think the legs kind of gave out in that fourth quarter with them. But I really like the Utah team. I think they're hard to, to match up with sometimes, and especially on the back-to-back -back of, a, of, a, of a team with, that we don't quite have the depth that they have. This is probably a, a little simpler than the statement is because there's so much more that goes into it. But did we learn, and I think we knew this going into the weekend, we can play with anybody, and that's anybody in the conference and in the country, even with Charlize, because again, as you mentioned, led most of the way against the sixth ranked team in the country, came back and took a second half lead against Utah. We can play with anybody. Now the question is, is can we finish against anybody? So, and you mentioned it's that margin of error, and I mean, I, I say that I might be making it too simple because that's always the case in sports, <laughs> right? The margin of error is always going to be the difference, but that margin of error is just shook a little bit for us now. Yeah, I mean, I think the Utah game was lost on eight, uh, 16 turnovers that led to 25 points. I mean, they just make you pay for live ball turnovers. Uh, their, their three ball, their, their presence in the post, them spreading you out. But you give them runouts, and and we had four. It was 25 to four. I mean that, and they were again. We've said that. That's the margin of error. You, you know, <clears throat> we might can survive 12 turnovers, but you just can't get to 16, and you can't give that many points up in in open court situations. So that's where it is. I mean, it it just makes us have to be a little bit better in the half court. We've got to just make our players not take chances. You know. I can I understand Bella got three really bad calls I think and but she had I think she had a boatload of turnovers and three of them were probably bad calls but the other ones were just trying to do too much decision making is always big but we, and we've just got to take care of the basketball and get a shot every time we have the basketball and I think then we have a chance to to stay with people. And then is there also anything to the fact that what you guys have, a couple of practices with this now newly configured team, the fact that there is an adjustment period because, again, as you mentioned on, on last week's show, if, if Charlize were 
to miss time and, and, and obviously we now know that she's out for the rest of the season. There's going to be more minutes for everybody. There's going to be more shots for everybody. And that's a, a bit of an adjustment period. And, and, and the more you play, the more you're going to maybe become, I don't know if a custom is the right word, but to, to have to play without your least because we know now it, it's not a one-week thing. It's not a two-week thing, but you're going to get more practice time with this group of players. Well, got to really like, you know, just AT's performance this weekend, coming back, having hardly practiced, like two practices and never went full court. So her body's feeling it a little bit this week. But got to like her scoring punch, her presence, her ball handling. Got to love L.A., you know, her, her ability to handle the ball and, and produce points. Uh, the stability there. Again, Bella needs to give us 15 points a night. We, we, she came up a little short against Colorado. That was, that was where we were missing that scoring punch in the post. Um, and again, I think uh, Tara had an amazing weekend and has had, had, had like four great games in a row. So it feels like we have about four players. We need to stretch that into five and six that are just legit double double digit points. And then our bench has to do better. You know, Jenna's been amazing. Um, every time she stepped on the court. She had a little bit of a viral bug on Friday, had it all last week, and Friday I think was kind of the, we finally got her on some meds on Friday. Uh, I, so I think she wasn't quite herself on Friday, but she, I love the fact that she bounced back and practiced all week and obviously came in and did a good job on Sunday. But she's been really solid for us. Uh, it, and then I think the point that I, that I would say to you is, we might have to play a little different, and, and I like that we went zone at the end of the game mm -hmm. uh, against Utah and kind of got them off riv rhythm. It might be a way to stretch our bench a little bit, be big instead of trying to replace Charlize with, you know, guards. You know, we might have to go big, big, Jess and, and uh, Alex together, Bella and Alex together, play a few possessions of zone just to, to save our guards a little bit of, of the pounding that they're taking and, and – how much production they have to do and I, and and that's what i mean like we that's the adjustment right i think that's the adjustment can we steal some possessions you know a couple of minutes here a couple of minutes in the fourth quarter so that it at the end of the game we have a little more juice than we have had in the last two games you mentioned a few players uh, i want to spotlight just a, a couple of them you mentioned at and and the fact that her last game was auburn before christmas yeah, before she yeah. played on i Friday. didn't realize that and yeah. and then the fact that she played the way that she played this week and how, how promising is that for you did you expect that out of her yeah i i didn't know what to expect but she is you know, obviously, I loved her body language and how she's been on the bench at UCLA. She had she couldn't talk the next four days when she came back because she yelled so much at the <laughs> UCLA game. So, you know, she's so invested. And and again, she's a point guard. She's smart. And honestly, I don't know if y'all remember a year ago when Charlize left. That uh, AT stepped right into those lineups and was was dominant scoring threat I was going when up Charlize, yeah when Charlize left and I think she was trying to figure out what I do when Charlize comes back so it really is kind of her team now to help you know mold LA into that talking role but right now we're we're pretty quiet without Charlize so AT's got to step into that leadership role not to mention ball handling role scoring role you know de mm -hmm. defending role she's kind of got to do it all for us so really proud of how she played now I've been told by the trainer that her body feels like she got hit by a, a truck <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we got to mend her back into shape uh, and try to get her ready for Friday right uh, and then <laughs> one other player you mentioned Tara not only this weekend but I had a really special weekend last weekend down in LA as well what have you seen from her over these last two weeks obviously her scoring's been up but I I just think her all-around game's been up the last couple of weeks I don't know I know Lori's gonna talk a little bit later but I think we set uh, uh, Tara down it had to have been early December, and her numbers weren't great, and, and we just finally just said, you you know, you you got to start reading the floor better, and you got to start playing on two feet, you know, get into the lane, land on two, find people, you know, it's not always about scoring off the dribble, it's about pivoting, and, and she took that to heart, and I don't know what her assist to turnover ratio is right now, but it might be the best on her team, yeah. maybe ATs is a little bit better, I'm not sure. But t take it just – she took that to heart, and now she just – you know, she doesn't take those rhythm layups that get blocked like she used to. She gets in there and she pivots and finds people. She gets in there and pivots and gets, you know, gets her guy up in the air and then steps through. 
She's scoring in the post. She's her three's been amazing. She's working on her outside game so much. Uh, she's doing a little more ball handling, which mm -hmm. I don't know that we any any of us thought that would happen. And then she's still got that athleticism and length to stampede drive and and score at the rim. So really, really happy with her. Just, I mean, there was a time I can't remember a month ago when she sat in my office and said, "I don't like score just having one shot." Why, why do I have one shot? I don't think we talked about it. And I was like, well, I don't like you having one rebound after 30 minutes. And so we had a little fight about that. And she was like, okay, I'll get more rebounds. And I said, if you get more rebounds, I bet you'll get more shots. Uh -huh. And it's all worked out pretty good for her. She's, she's hunting her shot. We need her to. She's shooting a great percentage. She's making great decisions. And defending pretty well. And defending great. And, and taking that role, of, you know, real – you know, wants, wants that role to guard, you know, some of the best players. Stepped in today. We did a little bit. Cramilli, you guys are going to get to see this shooter from, from um, Cal. And she just thought she was going to be guarding her. You know, she was like, well, <laughs> Charlize isn't here, so I got her. So you just got to love that about her. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get her here next week, maybe. Right. Sounds good. All right, we'll talk a little bit about Cal and Stanford coming up a little bit later on the show. We'll visit with Lori Kane. She's going to come up and join us, the associate head coach of the Cougs. And we'll have one more segment with Cammie before we get to the associate head coach. It's all right here from Zuppos. Happy to have you with us. Just getting things started. It's a Cougar basketball hour from Lairfield. <laughs> Spokane International Airport is a proud sponsor of Washington State University Athletics. The airport connects Cougar fans and alums with over 50 daily departures to 18 nonstop destinations provided by six major airlines, as well as one-stop connections to most major metropolitan centers throughout the U.S. Real-time arrival and flight departure information is available at SpokaneAirports.net. Spokane International Airport, when it's time to fly. The tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On Pac-12 Radio, there is complete coverage of every school in the conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See offer details at SiriusXM.com slash Pac-12 Sports. There's so much to do and see here at Washington State University Pullman, and we at the Brawlsford WSU Visitor Center are here to help, and we love to help. So start your visit with us, and our team of Cougs will share insider tips on the best places to eat or where to catch a stunning view of the Palouse. We'll show you where to park, how to get to your destination, connect you to on-campus resources. So for a better visitor experience, start right here at the Brawlsford WSU Visitor Center on the corner of Main and Spring Streets near downtown Pullman. When you're out driving around the Palouse, be sure to stop by Tick Clock Drug in Colfax. Family owned and operated, they're your one-stop shop for pharmacy, healthcare, apparel, cards, home decor, and gifts for all ages. And for all your printing needs, be sure Cougar Graphics is the place to call. When it comes to paper, Cougar Graphics can print it. Tick Clock Drug and Cougar Graphics on Main Street in Colfax. Well, Steve Grubbs, welcome back once again here to Zeppos. Again, it is your Cougar Basketball Hour with the head coach of Washington State University Basketball, Cami Etheridge. If you've got questions for the coach, we've got uh, some slips of paper. You can come up and write your question down, and we will ask them to the head coach, and I'll already have some. And if you have any for Lori, you can also write those questions down. Do you mind if we get to a couple of All questions? All right. I've already been uh, warned. All right. A rowdy table in here. Uh, there is I'm a rowdy table. Well, I'm not going to point it out. There's more than a rowdy table. <laughs> in here, I can tell you that right now. Happy to have you with us here from Zeppos. Uh, you were talking earlier about uh, some of the turnovers and that Bella maybe had a few that maybe were some, some not so great calls. What is your key to successfully complaining slash yelling at the officials without getting teed up if there is a, a line that you have there? I'm sure I have a terrible reputation, although I don't use bad language other than you're terrible. I say that a lot. That's terrible. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't curse. 
I, but I'm very obviously y'all know I'm I make my point and I just couldn't believe like that one of our players got jacked right in front of our bench on a illegal screen last night the very first play of the game uh -huh. and the lady's in front of us and she doesn't call us and and then she goes down there and calls uh -huh. Bella for st she jump stops and hands off and they call her for that like <laughs> the inconsistencies of officiating and it's it's not like just one one official might be the same but this guy plays calls it different and they're in that position and it's maddening, but I, it doesn't matter. Every coach's meetings that we go to, we all sit around, and uh -huh. for two hours we complain about the officials, and then it, it means nothing. Let you me. just move on. <laughs> I've, I've figured out the better your team is, the less you, you, you bother, you're bothered by the officials. Yeah. I don't know. So. Okay. Got one more we here. Uh, this is from apparently a sideline coach. <laughs> Being a sideline coach, the Colorado team came in with a physical attitude to beat you up. How do you change or tell your team to respond to the moment? Well, I, that's a great, uh, you know, s just seeing that. I mean, Colorado is, I think, one of the most physical teams. And and uh, they're, we just, we kept saying the words, they're going to whack you. I mean, if you drive it in there, they're going to whack you. It's just like, and they'll never get called for it. And, and we have some clips, again, to send to the officials where it's just like they, they, they hit A.T. on a layup, and it, they went across her arm, and the lady just stared me down and said, no, she didn't get hit. And, and then it's just <laughs> right there on TV. And, um, you know, but you just, you know, I thought our players really handled the physicality yeah. of, of, of Colorado. I was a little bit disappointed. Again, our post, Va Von Ley is a good player, yeah. but she's not, she's not just, She's not peely. She's not pushing you around right. and shoving you. And I thought we needed to attack the lane a little bit more and be a little bit better better in the in the pe in the post against Colorado. I think that's what we were missing in that game. But uh, again, I think we always match up well with Colorado. I think we can go down there and beat them there. Uh, so we'll 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 keep working on the physicality of getting ready for them. Defensively, how do you think you did this weekend? You hold Colorado to 63 points. Utah, who came in averaging more than 80 points. Again, Foreman got loose a little bit in, in the second half for Colorado. Utah, we know that they either get to the rim or shoot threes, and they hit their fair share of threes against us on Sunday. But, but overall, defensively, holding Colorado and Utah to 63 and 73, your thoughts on that, what we did defensively this past weekend? I really, I th again, I thought we did a great job at Colorado other than uh, Foreman. I mean, Frida was, was just – you know, she is a quick shoot sniper. Um, just made some mistakes on on out of bounds plays where we wanted to set up a certain way. We didn't the first time she scored that one. We lost her in trans. You know, and and I think that is a little bit of a, a Charlize effect. Charlize would have been matched with her. Probably would have been you know on point a little bit more. We're moving people in and out a little bit more. Things like that are going to happen. Just can't, though, for six, six threes. You just can't lose her that much. So, again, uh, in a game that is won or lost by, you know, two or three points, after if you don't foul at the end, you know, all you have to do is take away one or two of those plays, right. whether right. it's that three or whether it's a turnover or whether it's us scoring a basket that we need to finish. So, lots of points out there that I think uh, we could have scored on. We counted. I mean, honestly, the the shots we got were such quality shots, not not hard shots. You know, layups, runners, all those things that we generally make at a high clip, and we missed a lot of them. So, again, I think we can be better. I think we have a chance to to again regroup and and compete really well against the teams we're playing coming up. Uh, I'll give you one more before we go into the break. Uh, you've now seen everybody in the conference, including Colorado and Utah, outside of the Oregon schools in person. Is there one team ahead of the other in your mind? Is there one, or is it that congested when it comes to conference as far as the separation? There's, there's not that much, or is there in your mind a best team in this conference? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Stanford is a hard matchup for us for whatever reason. They're bigs. So we just have to find find a way to to spread them out and, and get some production. I think Stanford's really pretty quality across the board. I have not seen Oregon State in person. They seem to have, you know, uh, a good mix of bigs inside and, and then, you know, snipers on the outside. Uh, and I really like Utah. I think if they're on, they're hard to, to play against. Uh, uh, UCLA's a little banged up. If Lauren Betts gets back for UCLA, I think they really are a top 10 team. So we saw them when they didn't have her. Without her, they're not quite there. Mm -hmm. Heck, 
if Juju scores 51, I guess they can beat a lot of teams too. So I'm just telling you, this quality of this competition, the quality of this league, playing, you know, four or five top – Five uh, top ten teams in the country, top twelve teams in the country, and six games yeah. is insane. So um, again, I don't want to overlook anybody because they'll probably be listening and be mad. If we don't <laughs> talk about All it. right, I, I lied. I'm going to do one more because you brought it up. Just in case the folks here didn't realize, Juju Watkins had 51 on Friday night and a win over Stanford. I think it was 51 of the 67 points for USC as they knocked off Stanford on Friday night. Is there a game from your playing career, not that you scored 51, but where everything was going just right? You were the you were the quarterback of those Texas teams, and you were you were distributing. I think you're still the the all-time record holder and most assists in a game, most assists in a career at the University of Texas. But was was there a game where you felt like everything was just going right in your playing career? I can't tell anybody that I can remember that, but I'm telling you, for all anyone that ever gets a chance to watch. Next time Juju comes to to this place, if they if she ever does, she might be one of the best players to have ever will ever have played the sport. I mean, her six two body control moves like a guy, but but talent. Uh, the only thing she does isn't committed to is all out defense. I'm, she's not a great defender yet, but I've really never seen someone that can. And, and the, I mean, Maya Moore, Tarasi, but as a freshman doing some of the things she's doing and the shots she's making, really, really impressive. So that is pretty special. And, uh, you know, I have won a national championship, and she hadn't done <laughs> that's that. That's true. So it that was a pretty good year when we went undefeated. So that's about the only thing I remember. I just remember we won a lot of games, and we didn't have any losses. We had zero, zero. in the loss column. That's the big. That's the one you remember. And I guess bring a full circle. Who'd you beat that year in the championship? Yeah, game? we might have beaten USC <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah. championship game. That Absolutely. Year, I'm pretty sure. All right, again, the national champion, the Hall of Famer, Cam Etheridge, with us. It is your Cougar Basketball Hour. We're going to talk with Lori coming up next. So, associate head coach of the Cougars. It's next, and it's your Cougar Basketball Hour from Zeppos from Learfield. Nothing works up an appetite like cheering for your Cougs on game day. So why not cheer them on at Northern Quest with an impressive roster of restaurants and lounges? You can tackle the menu at Epic and catch every play on the 10 by 30 foot screen. Or grab a steak at Maslow's, a fine cigar at Legends of Fire, even a burger from Fat Burger. You know, for your inner linebacker. See more at northernquest.com. Go Cougs! Hey, Coug fans, can't decide what to do with your late-night weekends? Why not Cosmic Bowling? Every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. is Cosmic Bowling at Zeppos. At a price designed with everyone in mind, we are your destination for music, disco lights, and, of course, bowling. Can't join us on the weekends? Zeppos is the place to be for all ages every day of the week. With bowling, food, and drink specials, we offer prices that won't break the budget. You can even reserve your lane in advance with online reservations at Zeppos.com. When looking for fun in Pullman, look no further than Zeppos. Close, convenient, connected. The Pullman Moscow Regional Airport and Alaska Air get you where you want to go. And with Alaska's One World Alliance, that's just about anywhere. With multiple flights to Seattle most days, plus one to Boise, that's another reason to use PUW to get you home. By the time you're winding your way through Washtucknaw on 26 or Winchester on 95, you'll be in Seattle or Boise. Save on gas, higher parking fees, and your time. Fly PUW, the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport, your Cougar and Alaska hometown airport. This Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital are being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. Well, Steve Grubbs, welcome right back. It is your Cougar Basketball Hour. Happy to have you with us on this Monday night here, and we get a chance to talk to Associate Head Coach Lori Kane as she gets a headset on and gets set to join us. First of all, Lori, uh, it's been our first time on the air to talk this season. How are you, and how happy Monday to you. 
Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. And yeah, it's good good to finally get to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk a little bit about a uh, couple things that we were talking about the head coach with. Uh, first of all, let's start with Tara Wallach. And, and we were talking about her and she said maybe you could have a little bit more insight on this. Uh, what do you think you've seen out of Tara these last couple of weeks? Because I think that she's played her best basketball these last two weeks. Yeah, well, I think it's just like Coach E said. Um, I just remember, I think it might have been after our game in Missoula at Montana, and she just was frustrated with her scoring and just really, really, really focused on how can I get more shots and how can I score the ball and, and just I think was viewing herself as, you know, only a scorer. And obviously anyone who's seen her play, um, it's obvious that, that she's got, you know, so much more to give than just scoring. And, and we just sat down and talked about, you know, letting the game come to her a little bit and and figuring out that, man, your stampede drive is really, really, really good and really hard to guard, but everyone knows that and they're going to collapse on you. And being able to find your teammates, you know, in those moments and like, like Coach E talked about, being able to stop on two feet and, and pivot and kind of have an out and not feel like every single time you drive it in there, you've got to find a way to, to take the shot yourself. And, again, she just really bought into that, I think, and, and – as she did that, you know, her, her, like we said, her assist numbers are just off the charts, mm -hmm. um, what she's been able to do. And I think in, in having that kind of a mindset, it's freed her up to feel like, yeah, I can rip drive whenever I want, knowing that I can make a great decision at the end of it. And she scored the ball a lot better, I think, playing with that mentality yeah. and just letting the game come to her. So, you know, it's just a credit to her to, to really be coachable and, and listen in that moment and, and, and buy into what we're trying to do. As you take a look at this team and, and the way that we obviously had to kind of adjust on the fly here going into this weekend, your thoughts on, on what we say, saw out of AT this weekend coming back again after such a long layoff because it had been since uh, prior to Christmas. I mean, it had been more than a month since she played. Your thought on what you saw out of her? Yeah, well, the funny thing about, about AT and, and even in the recruiting process, uh -huh. you know, we did the recruiting process with her, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of on the back end of COVID. So we could never get over there to watch her play live because it was, it just wasn't really a, an option at the time because of all the residual things with, with COVID and she was playing in Spain. And so I spent, you know, a lot of hours watching her on film while she was playing in Spain. And, you know, I just remember thinking, gosh, like, I don't know, Coach Etheridge might really not not like her body language and she <laughs> might not, not like, you know, how she reacts to certain things because, you know, she was playing on a team where she carried the entire load and she was very, very much a pass-first point guard. She never looked for her own shot. But then when she didn't have the ball when she needed it, she kind of – she could show frustration for her teammates and things like that. And so when AT came to us to begin with, it was a little bit of like, what's this going to be like, you know? Mm -hmm. And And – I just remember last year as a freshman, practice was she could be just a little bit disinterested in practice. Mm -hmm. But when the ball went up, she was a gamer. <laughs> and I think that's something that, that just was so obvious even on Friday and, and Sunday after having not practiced for right. a long time or played. The kid is just competitive, and she's a gamer. And, you know, I think going back to my original comments about what she was like in high school, she's figured out that she is a capable scorer. We need her to score. We need her to be aggressive and look for her shot. And so it's just really cool kind of to see her, all those things that we know she is competitively come together and, and, and her to really step into a role and, and, and thrive in it. And I think she's really happy with, with you know, the opportunities that she's had by coming yeah. to Washington State and to grow her game and to take on a bigger responsibility. Now I know just like the rest of our team, she would love to not be having the responsibility right. of, of having to, you know, take on the load that we're missing with Charlize but at the same time um, you know that that kid's got an amazing future and, and she she really is the future of our program from a leadership standpoint was that light that that you started to see was that like second half of the conference season last year is that kind of when it started to show and and then how gratifying is it for you coach when you see the player start to oh yeah that's what she was talking about and, and see them realize it into becoming what they can become yeah it's really cool and you know AT AT's the type that she she really when you watch her play she really prefers to have a great assist you know versus scoring that's just her personality and she's a true point guard in that sense but I think like coach others spoke to when when Charlize went out last year or you know had to go home for her grandmother's funeral and stuff like that um 
watching AT just fearlessly step into – I mean, we played USC and UCLA. Charlize leaves – well, we played Utah first. I think we played Utah, Colorado um, for our first conference games right. of the year, basically. Yep. She's out there as a freshman without Charlize trying to run the show. And I think in all those games she scored in double figures um, when she was someone who never even really looked for her shot. And so um, – and then I thought that AT just – she responded – you know, this summer and just put in a ton of work and, and really realized, hey, like I want to be able to, to be a great shooter and, and to be a great scorer. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's super gratifying, I think, when you see kids like kind of get out of their comfort zone and, and, and then realize, oh, wow, like I can be so much more than I ever imagined. Uh, you mentioned the recruiting process with the Stero Tahina. What about this freshman class and, and what you've seen out of them? I mean, obviously, we're going to be leaning on them heavily down the stretch, but what have you seen out of L.A. so far this season? Jenna Villa, who's been remarkable off of the bench for Washington State. Alex Colville starting to find a little bit of rhythm here and there, hitting some mid-range shots, and, and obviously they're on the defensive end with her size. What have you seen out of this year's freshman class? Yeah, well, I think I think we've kind of, you know, obviously this is year six that we've been here, and every year I think we've just had this mentality in recruiting that, you know, we might not be able to sign the five-star kid, but we just want to keep moving that needle and just get a little bit better every single year with the class that we sign. And I think this year we really made that needle jump a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm really, really just, you know, so excited about this freshman class. And, and it's funny, so we called Jenna – when she was an eighth grader mm -hmm. and offered her when she was an eighth. She might have been a seventh grader. Seventh, <laughs> summer between her seventh and eighth grade or, or summer between her eighth grade and freshman year. Um, saw her out in Seattle. We were terrible. You know, we probably didn't win a game that whole first year. Um, and you, you just see the kid and you're like, that's exactly what we want in our program. And so um, she by far had the longest process with us. Um, and just, you know, it's, it's so cool when you, when you get a kid of her caliber, she's probably the, the highest ranked recruit we've ever signed and you get a kid of her caliber to believe in you and, and, you know, to trust you even, even when you're not quite probably as good as some of the other schools that are recruiting her. Um, and obviously her future is just so bright. I mean, I think right now what people see from her is her three point shooting. Um, but man, that drive she had against UCLA. Yeah. That's big time, yeah. you know, and, and she's got and, and she's she's fearless. You know, she's she walks in every day with a I mean, I think one of my favorite plays of the year. I probably everyone will remember it. I think it made ESPN, but we were at USC and Jenna had Juju kind of right in front of their bench. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Juju just shoved her. I mean, it was a total offensive foul, yeah. but Jenna goes flying opposite and the ref doesn't make a call and Juju steps into a three and, you know, everyone acts like, oh, that's just you know, whatever mm -hmm. everyone is going to do about that celebration. Well, what people don't realize, because they're so watching that, is that that very next possession we go down on offense and Jenna posted Juju up for about 10 seconds trying to get the ball <laughs> like a savage. <laughs> and that that says everything about her mentality and, and just her competitive spirit and her fearlessness. And that's going to – that's she's going to turn into an unbelievably great player in our program. Um, I know I just talked a ton about Jenna. She had – obviously, we've ha we probably have the longest relationship with her. Um, Alex, we started recruiting, though, as well, when she was probably a sophomore. Mm -hmm. um, and another kid that just had really good options and big options and, and just, you know, loved, loved the Pullman culture and loved our team culture and bet on people. Uh -huh. And I think she's, she's a player, obviously, that immediately impacts the game when she comes in defensively because people are – I mean, she blocked Juju. Let's just keep talking about Juju <laughs> since she had 51. But, I mean, she, she's got the ability to, to really, you know – um, I think people are scared to go in the paint no, against her. And, no. and that's, that's – and, and, you know, again, I, I say even – this is probably a big statement, but I think she can, she can be a little bit Brink-like at some point. I think she's just got to get that, that savage and fearless mindset. But she's got the athleticism, the length, the skill, you know, to just turn into an unbelievable player. And um, L.A. was just a process for us. Um, obviously a kid that was – hard to recruit because she knew very little English uh -huh. um, but you know just kind of stuck with her and stuck with her when I think there were probably a lot of schools that knew about her but um, 
you know, she was just difficult to recruit because she wouldn't respond, and we just kept pursuing her and kept pursuing her. And, I mean, the rest is history with her. I think you just get a kid that has played at a high level and, and is just, um, you know, so battle-tested already, and I think she's just proven everything that, that she already is. And, and I, I think she's only scratching the surface, too, because that kid's never spent time working on her skills. So she can, she can really get a lot better. Cougar basketball hour. Going to keep you for one more segment, if that's all right, as we are here from Zeppos, California, and Stanford coming up this weekend. Friday night against California at 7, Stanford against 1. We'll be back with the associate coach. It's more of the Cougar basketball hour from Zeppos, and it's next from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. It's college football's latest tradition. It's fierce, glorious, and ridiculously delicious. It's the Nom Nom Snack Bowl Flyaway. Just download the Nom Nom app to enter the competition. Play all season long to score free snacks and tasty tailgate treats. One lucky champion will win a free trip for two to the Pac-12 championship game in Las Vegas, Nevada. Go Cougs! Ready for a snack down? Download the Nom Nom app to find out. Nom Nom. Life in the snack lane. When you're traveling on Napluse, make sure you stop in Colfax. Colfax is home to great businesses like Pomeroy Grain Growers. For all your crop marketing needs, contact Brian or Eric. You're in good hands at Pomeroy Grain Growers. If you're considering assisted living needs, consider the courtyard at Colfax, where it's always a wonderful way to live. And for all your gift-giving needs, Tick Lock Drug has the best selection on the blues. Whether you're looking to get away or you're ready to find your way back home, the best way to travel is with Alaska Airlines and the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport. When you fly PUW, you're on an Embraer 175 jet with economy, first class, and premium seating. Multiple flights most days to Seattle and one direct to Boise. And with a new runway and instrument approach, PUW and Alaska Air get you there reliably. Use alaskaair.com and PUW, the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport. Close, convenient, and connected. Well, happy to have you with us. It is your Cougar Basketball Hour. And again, our thanks to not only head coach Cammie Etheridge, but associate head coach Lori Kane joining us here uh, as we are here live from Zeppos as we get ready for another weekend at home. California and Stanford coming up. Coach, uh, obviously you're so much into the recruiting when it comes to Washington State uh, for Washington State University. Is there one part of the recruiting process that you like over another? Is it going over the fil film? Is it meeting the players? Is there one part of the recruiting process that you enjoy over the other? And is there another part that just makes you want to pull your hair out and makes it go gray? I like it when they commit. <laughs> that's, that's, about, that's, that's, the, that's absolutely. The, that's the best part by far. But um, honestly, what I really enjoy, I love it when we get a commitment, and then I like watching their film. Yeah. Usually, like that's when I'm like, because I, I feel so invested and just like, uh -huh. you know, you're just so for them and 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 things like that. But um, you know, it's recruiting is part of the job mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it is necessarily you know my favorite thing to do right um, even though it, you know it, it, it is really really the process itself though it can be so rewarding and 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 just a lot of fun because you kind of you get a chance to see your hard work you know kind of result in something good and and I think it's it's fun to just to get to know um, to know players and and what they're like and and I, it's just rewarding when you find a kid that just that fits who you know Coach Etheridge is and what she's looking for in a player and and you know the kind of culture that that she wants you know for this program and and th those are the ones that are really fun you know when you find the kid that's just the perfect fit so um, I'm not sure that I'm good at that or you know that we always that we always get it right but um, 
yeah, it's it's just part of it. Well, I think your your guys is turning around here at Washington State have proven that you guys are pretty good at it. So I, I think that we would we will take what you have done. That is for certain. Is there you mentioned uh, the part of the coaching process? Is there a part you enjoy more? Is it the game? Is it working with the players in practice? Is it maybe going over film and producing the scout? Is, is there a part of the coaching that that you prefer over the other, or or that's most enjoyable to you? And and is that different than when you were a player, maybe? Yeah, good question. I mean, I, I think one thing I know is that I'm just beyond fortunate, you know, to work for someone like Coach Etheridge. Um, you know, to, to have a boss like her and to have a leader like her that is just about all the right things and, you know, has taught me just pretty much everything I know, you know, mm -hmm. from, from a – I mean, obviously I got to play for her. So known her for many, many years and, and – um, you know, I, I think because I think when you, you like the people that you work with and you believe in the people that you work with and and you want success, you know, for for her, for this program as much as I want it, it the whole everything, the day to day is just enjoyable, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it really is about the process more than anything. And just, you know, that it, people call it a grind. Yes, it, it can be a grind, but just that that pursuit of excellence and that pursuit of, you know, helping young players you know realize their dreams and and grow into you know not just the basketball players that they want to become but also the leaders and and the people and the teammates and the daughters and the sisters and you know like like that's what i think is so fun and so rewarding and and there's so many things that go into that you know on the day to day and whether that's you know a, a meeting with a player off the court you know, where we're just talking to them about life or whether that's, you know, the grind on the court where you're where you're really trying to demand and and push them beyond what they perceive as their limits and show them that they have, you know, more in them. And and then just watching their growth over the four years. I think that's that's one of the coolest things about this job. And and, um, you know, that's 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 kind of what it's all about. It's high level sport and it's high level competition. But within that, it's about character growth and and, um, you know, using that as a vehicle to, to, to just make really awesome people. My guess is that most of the people in this room might know, and, and some of the people tuning in might know, you, you, this was a, a heck of a basketball player at Kansas State and, and played for Coach Etheridge. It went on to play in the WNBA. I, I got a, a, and I think we're going to throw the clip up on the video if you guys want to tune in on WSUCougars.com, uh, either, and it's up uh, all week, so you can tune in if you're here live. Did, did I hear this right? 132 threes in 135 shots in five minutes. Do you remember that? <laughs> and what was that five-minute clip like for you? She had 132 threes in 135 shots, and she did it in five minutes. Yeah, well, first of all, <laughs> if you look at me... You know that, like, the only chance I had to even make it to the Division One level is I better be good at something because I'm a terrible athlete. So I had to, I had to, you know, growing up, I just grew up in a small town where I didn't have pickup games. I didn't have, I, I really didn't have a chance to, to have defense, you know, on me a lot. And so I just went to the gym and I shot and I shot and I shot and I shot on my own. And, and um, you know, I wasn't a very good player. I was just, I was just <laughs> oh, a good shooter. On. I was just a good shooter. But, you know, like, I, again, I had the chance, and, 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 you know, Coach Etheridge will never toot her own horn at all. But, um, you know, I had a chance to play for the best player development coach in the country, in the world, um, at Kansas State. And that's why I probably had a chance to go on beyond that and not just play in college, but also have a chance to play a little bit professionally. And, you know, just the things that she taught me and how to get it off quicker and, you know, on and on and on. Um, I, you know, I can't, I, I just can't overstate that. Um, but yeah, that was actually just a silly challenge. Someone saw it on YouTube. In fact, I think Coach Etheridge um, saw that on YouTube and she was like, Lori, can you beat this? Like it was some <laughs> guy that made 119 or something in five minutes. And, and um, I did it a few times. I think I always was over 119, but I wasn't like that was by far my best my best round. <laughs> that one was that made it to YouTube. So I mean, I'm pretty good at math, but I didn't know what 132 out of 135 is. It's 97.8 percent and 135 shots from beyond the three point line. And you also won a three point shooting contest at the WNBA level, did you not? 
I did. I did. There was. I was playing for the Washington Mystics, and and they hosted the uh, All Star game one year. And this was before only All Stars could participate in the skills competition and the and the three point shooting contest. Um, and I was not an All Star. <laughs> For sure, I was just trying to get off the bench every now and then. So, uh, but it was it was hosted at 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 uh, you know the Mystics facility there, and, and our GM just kind of went to bat and was like, you know, Lori's right here in town, put her in that three point contest, and <laughs> and um, so so they did, and it was you know it, I was terrified honestly because it was all the fans just wanted me to win so bad, and I've never usually I played for myself and cause for the enjoyment, and I love to play, and that was one moment where I was like I gotta win it for these people, but. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just I, I was very fortunate to get to participate in it, and and um, it was pretty cool. That is cool stuff. Uh, again, Lori Kane joining me. Uh, how important are these games coming up this week? And we're going to talk about with Cami, but California obviously on Friday, huge game coming up on Friday. Yeah, and I mean, I think every game from here on out is is important, you know, for us and for our growth, and and you know, just keeping a real. I, uh, just that mindset of, of can we keep getting better and can we keep finding ways and and um, I think especially obviously with with our with our young team now um, this is just so important for us for this year for the future um, and I think there's there's so many opportunities left you know in this season and and you look at the schedule and you just you just go my goodness like <laughs> this is really hard but um, Coach Ether said it to our team even this morning in film. She was like, I'm, I'm not afraid of hard. Like, hard is good. Hard is good for us. Um, it's going to make us better. And, and I think as long as we just keep coming in every single day and, and trying to figure out a way to get a little bit better and, and um, you know, we're going we're gonna to find a way to get a couple wins. No doubt about that. Again, our thanks to Lori. We'll have the coach back up here. Cammy Ether is joining me again right after this. It's the Cougar Basketball Hour from Zeppos. If a very natural gas pipeline is leaking outside your home, you may see dead vegetation, hear a hissing noise, or smell it. Because Avista adds a rotten egg scent that's easily detectable. If so, get far away and call 911 and Avista. And if you ever smell a natural gas leak indoors, get everyone outside fast. Don't flip light switches, use a cell phone, or do anything to cause a spark. Go somewhere safe, like a neighbor's house, then call 911 and Avista. We just want you to be safe. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. Close, convenient, connected. The Pullman Moscow Regional Airport in Alaska Air gets you where you want to go. And with Alaska's One World Alliance, that's just about anywhere. With multiple flights to Seattle most days, plus one to Boise, that's another reason to use PUW to get you home. By the time you're winding your way through Washtucknaw on 26 or Winchester on 95, you'll be in Seattle or Boise. Save on gas, higher parking fees, and your time. Fly PUW, the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport, your Cougar and Alaska hometown airport. At Washington State University Pullman, there's always a lot happening, and many activities are open to the community. It can be tough to know what's going on, where it's happening, and where you can park. But all of us at the Brawlsford WSU Visitor Center love to help people find the answers. We keep a list of events, and I'll let you in on a secret. There's plenty of public parking on campus. You just need to know where to look. There's a new campus parking map to make it even easier. And if you need a temporary permit, we can help you with that, too. We are here to connect community and campus at the Brawlsford WSU Visitor Center on the corner of Main and Spring Streets near downtown Pullman. Well, again, it is your Cougar Basketball Hour as we are live from Zeppos in Pullman here every Monday night throughout the remainder of the basketball season. Again, the Cougars back home this weekend. We would love you to join us Friday night when the California Golden Bears come to town at 7 o'clock and then Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock when Stanford comes to town. So you, you put Lori up to that challenge and, and talk just a, a little bit about uh, about the player that Lori was when you coached her at Kansas State. Well, it's I feel awful that I was we were such bad coaches and really the game and coaching has gotten better uh -huh. and how you use players that are specialties and we weren't good enough to understand how to do that 
Um, Lori in today's game would be phenomenal. And I think now what we know and how to get people open and how to space the floor and how to run stuff, I think, you know, she would just fit into today's game. Heck, she kills people in our practice still. And she's got the whole, <laughs> you know, and she's way in, in better shape than anyone ever dreamed of being in our program. So. Uh, just so proud of her and proud that she's a part of this team. And she doesn't say anything about who she is, but talk about someone who really is the player development coach. I mean, I've kind of taught her everything I know. and uh, But she's learned so much through, the, through great coaching and being in professional leagues all over the world. Um, again, she kind of runs our player development. Our kids come to her to shoot extra. Um, just a phenomenal uh, assistant, phenomenal person, just everything you want to be for uh, and, a, and a recruiter extraordinaire literally we're 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 on the phone tomorrow with the kid we've got a recruit coming in this weekend we we're going to become the international team of the world but they're going to be really good players and and they're they're going to want to come here and mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is getting players that are sold out to be here and that are really great players and we want to make this place better than it's ever been and we're not done being uh you know, achieving and striving to, to get to Sweet 16s and Elite 8s. We, we really have that in our plans, and we're trying to go get players that can get us there. Absolutely. Again, with us, head coach of the Cougs, Cammie Etheridge, did have a couple more questions. This one has to do with Charlize. Uh, it said it was wonderful before the Colorado game when one of their players gave Charlize a hug. Picture was taken with one of their coaches. The referee even had some words to have. There's a camaraderie, isn't there, within our game? Uh, and has any of the other teams acknowledged Charlize and just what she means have other people reached out to you about about your lease and again her season ending injury yeah i got a lot of uh messages from all the coaches and i think she got a lot of messages that that people reached <coughs> out i think even uh like the assistant from yukon reached out to me and just mentioned charlise and uh they were gonna she was gonna get paige beckers to call her because paige went through this so just in the in the women's game there is a lot of camaraderie there is a lot of you know, people have been through this kind of situation. I mean, Charlize really has respect of people across this country. Um, you know, I know people are really sad for Charlize, but they probably aren't real sad for us to not have Charlize. All right, all right. <laughs> but, um, you know, JR is amazing. She's been great. JR, I wanted to say this. JR mentioned before the game, she was like, gosh, I wish I had some of your freshmen. Yeah. You know, so she acknowledged the fact that, and we have uh, uh, Jenna's, Families here tonight. Uh, They're right here over here. Her mom and dad and grandma. Uh -huh. And um, and again, I just think our you know we're doing the right things. Uh, the freshman class is not just impressive to us, and and we get excited about them. But I think uh, across the 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 league, they're their people are watching and seeing how solid they are and how much impact they're making right now, and and know that they're going to get better and better. And the last one I had is you mentioned last week you went through injuries yourself. Uh, how did you handle it when you were an athlete when you had to go through the injuries? I didn't have – I was just a little bit like Charlize. I didn't have any injuries hardly when I played at college. And I got hurt when I was playing for the USA Basketball. And it used to be the Pan American Games, which is Pan now the America's Cup. Um, so it was the year before the Olympics. And I was the starting point guard on the USA Basketball team that was – basically the top team going to the Olympics the next year and blew out my knee and mm -hmm. just something I did a hundred you know thousands and thousands of time I came back you know within that year which is really difficult to do probably I wasn't the same player you just aren't and you know it takes about a year it really does to get your full game back and and so but that was you know that's the hard part when you push it to get back early you know sometimes you have a little bit problems down the road but mm -hmm. In that time, we didn't have the WNBA back then. You could go. I played overseas for a year in Italy, um, but since then I've done my the same leg ACL again. Now uh -huh. I've had that replaced by now. The other one probably needs to be replaced. So I'm telling you, old age creeps. It gets us all, doesn't it? So, uh, <laughs> but I just am proud of. I mean, uh, Charlize is attacking the the rehab. She's been in. She's in the weight room every single day with Zach. Um, you know, she looks great. She's in a good frame of mind. I think she's a little sad because. You know, she would have been over in China today mm -hmm. and with her team. And, you know, just all of that still kind of just fresh. Yeah, fresh and just gut wrenching for all the dreams that she had. But every day you get away from that injury, you realize, okay, I've just got to move on and I got to get better. And she's committed to getting better. And I just, th I really do think this is probably the light bulb, the final light bulb that's going to come on that's going to say, 
I'm going to get in tip-top shape. I'm going to be better than ever, and I, I don't expect anything but that from her. Absolutely. All right, we'll take one more break, come back for the final few minutes with the coach. We're from Zeppos. It's your Cougar Basketball Hour. Happy to have you with us from Zeppos and Pullman, and it is your Cougar Basketball Hour from Learfield. Hey, Coug fans, Tuesdays at Northern Quest are now officially Tuesdays with a capital two. Together with Coors Light, we're doubling up the fun for Camus Rewards members every Tuesday with two times the points, $2 Coors Lights, double promotion entries, $2 food specials, and too many more resort-wide deals to list here. So grab your Camus Rewards card and tackle your Tuesdays with Tuesdays only at Northern Quest. Details at northernquest.com. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Yeah. Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel, good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. In 2004, Pullman Regional Hospital opened its facility on Bishop Boulevard. It became a model of what a community hospital could be. Word got out about the extraordinary care people were getting, and services were added so that local residents no longer needed to travel to Spokane for many specialized services. Today, 18 years later, the demand has grown, and Pullman Regional Hospital is working to meet these new challenges. Learn more at PullmanRegional.org. Pullman Regional Hospital. Your hospital. Whether you're looking to get away or you're ready to find your way back home, the best way to travel is with Alaska Airlines and the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport. When you fly PUW, you're on an Embraer 175 jet with economy, first class, and premium seating. Multiple flights most days to Seattle and one direct to Boise. And with a new runway and instrument approach, PUW and Alaska Air get you there reliably. Use AlaskaAir.com and PUW, the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport. Close, convenient, and connected. Well, save your arms off. We're back once again to Zeppos and Pullman. It is your Cougar Basketball Hour. Do I understand you've got a birthday in your program today? Is that correct, Coach? Yo's birthday. Yo's the birthday girl. And I think, uh, you know, you know when the, you know they're getting to be seniors when they come in for their their weekly meeting and goes, and they just go, I'm skipping today. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I would just crush a, 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 a freshman would never have the nerve. And it was just like, yeah, it's my birthday and I'm not going today. And I'm just like, well. So I think she went home and snuggled up in the bed and, and just took the day off. Okay. So it's great. It's good. And, and she's making all A's, and I'm not too worried about hers. But oh. yeah. don't tell the freshmen I said that because yeah. they'll try that, okay. believe me. And don't tell Bella either because Bella will definitely try that. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Uh, we, we've reached the midway point or just about the midway point. I think we might be one game over. I think we played ten games, have eight left in the in the Pac-12 conference. And obviously, Cal and Stanford for coming up this weekend but I mean it, it, it's so interesting coach because each of these games uh, a, a big opportunity because again you're either playing somebody that's below you in the standings that you desperately want to try and get a win over or everybody in front of us is, is a nationally ranked and any any game that you win over a nationally ranked team gives your team some national recognition so every game is an opportunity and and it makes for an exciting month of February, if not uh, uh, hair pulling and <laughs> and very, but for the fans, an exciting month of February. Well, obviously, Cal, uh, Friday is our pink day and pink game. So uh, we've got some fancy new uh, uniforms that we'll be sporting and obviously for a great cause, uh, breast cancer and KL and I got that was my Olympic coach um, in, in back in those days and then I didn't want to name that year. <laughs> I stopped myself okay. short of name of the year. Uh -huh. uh, but just, you're right, Cal is a game that we go back and you just go, gosh, that was, we had that game won. We mm -hmm. had it in regulation won, and then we gave up an offensive rebound the last four seconds or two seconds of the game that they put, that put them up one. So just heart-wrenching that we lost that, and that's just, you know, when you look at your season, you go, gosh, if we could sneak out that win or that win or a mm -hmm. little bit more wins gets you, you know, further along. But 
you know, very winnable game. And then I was looking back at that game, and, and like you said before, we didn't have AT. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first games that we were playing without AT. Right. And so we were a little bit stretched. A uh, LA was coming in as a, a starter at that point. So now we have AT back. You don't have Charlie. So mm -hmm. just uh, a little bit of, of – fixing it and but i think that that bodes well too to have uh and but we didn't have charlie's for half because she got her eye <laughs> you know stitches in her eye so and we put, we had a lead at half so lots of things happened well uh, at cal i think we can play with them we match with them we need a great crowd um we need to find wins in this season and cal's a good first start and that's up on our schedule and and we need to we need to have be so determined to, to, to really play well against Cal. And again, swing for the fences against Stanford. Mm -hmm. Again, it's the middle of a four-game homestand. Had great crowds last weekend. Want to see out this weekend, as uh, as Cammy mentioned, the pink game coming up on Friday night against California. 7 o'clock your start time. Sunday at 1 against Stanford, as that will wrap up the four games here in Pullman, and then it will be off and on the road. Coach, uh, thank you, as always, for the time, and, and I guess just go Cougs and make sure everybody comes out this weekend. Appreciate everybody being here and being in the stands. and. Uh, Again, supporting this team. We need you and uh, really appreciate all the support and, and Coug love. Thanks to everybody that's been here. Thanks to thanks the Zeppos. three Jays as well. Yeah, yeah. All right. And Go again, Cougs. thanks to Zeppos. It's been your Cougar Basketball Hour, and it's been live from Zeppos from Learfield.